Leave it to Square Enix and the Balan Company to drop more info without us expecting it. A few days ago, they released the preview videos for World 7, 8, and 9, but didn't release any of the other usual info about the stages like the costumes, screenshots, and just what to expect overall from these worlds. Well, after a bunch of digging and some really badly translated Japanese, I was able to pull together a bunch of info on these three new worlds. Just keep in mind, a lot of this has been pulled from Japanese sources and I don't read Japanese myself, so I've had to Google Translate a bunch of it, so this is my best guess at exactly what all these mean. Also, I just want to give a really quick shout out to everyone that messaged me and left me comments letting me know that these videos dropped, I really do appreciate it. I've also set up a new email address specifically for any info you get, whether it's Balan related or any other games. You can reach out at info at unbrokenodds.com. This is going to be displayed on the screen right now and in the description down below, so feel free to send me any info you have there or any suggestions. Well, without any further delay, let's get into it. Like always, we'll be discussing costumes, characters, and bosses from these three worlds, so spoilers will happen. If you don't want to know any of this stuff before playing the game, now's your chance to stop the video. Okay, let's start with World 7. World 7 is titled The Former Champion Obsessed with Past Glory. The main character of World 7 is Cal Suresh. Cal was an undefeated chess champion and had won many trophies and tournaments. After losing a match to a younger competitor, Cal begins to doubt himself as well as his passion for the game, letting his negative emotions take over. Let's check out his short intro video. Looking at these screenshots from the levels, we can see that the world obviously has a chess theme to it. There's going to be a lot of verticality and height to the level, much like the pieces in a chess game. As well, we see familiar checkerboard patterns on the floor and a very cool castle feel overall. There look to be five main costumes in World 7, so let's take a look at them. First up, we've got the Paladin Puncher. This costume looks very similar to the Pumpkin Puncher and is said to be able to shoot an iron punch at a distant location. It will be useful for destroying not only enemies, but distant blocks. There is also mention of iron blocks. These might be more powerful blocks that need specific costumes to break, so the pumpkin puncher might not be able to break them. Next up is the quad cannon. This one will shoot bullets in four directions each time you stop moving. It sounds like this might be a really interesting mechanic to have to use in battle. Next is the speedy cheetah. This costume will let you run at ultra high speeds, but it sounds like it might be like the box box where you cannot control when the speed boost kicks in. So if that's true, you'll have to be really careful where you use it as you might fall off the platforms when you go really fast. Now looking at the floaty flower. Using this costume when you jump, the petals overhead will open and rotate allowing you to glide through the air. This will let you extend your jump distance, I'm guessing similar to the soaring sheep. Last up we have the tackling bull. With this costume, you can rush enemies or blocks made of iron or ice with its powerful rush attack. Again, this costume mentions iron blocks, so while it seems similar to the Whirling Wolf, again, perhaps the wolf costume won't be able to break these iron blocks. The boss of this level is Fort Stuffer the Fourth, or King Fortress. This one actually has two bodies that form as a pair and will shoot chess pieces and missiles to attack you. If you look at the screenshot, you can also see it looks like you'll be on another checkerboard for this fight. World 8. The Lady Too Scared to Love. I'm going to apologize right now if I mispronounce her name, but Chapter 8 looks to really pull at everyone's heartstrings with Ibn Bia. She was at the height of happiness, surrounded by a loving fiancé and her parents, when suddenly she loses her parents in a tragic accident. This causes her to reject love and to sink into despair and sadness, almost as if her heart were to freeze over. Anyone else getting some serious Frozen vibes? Let's watch her intro video.
As you can see, her world has become a world of despair, covered in snow and ice. However, through this sadness are glimpses of happier times which you'll see in the glowing lights and presents all throughout the stage. It looks like you may even get glimpses of wedding bells in this stage as well, which is really sad. The world is covered in a sheet of ice and will make traversal slippery and tricky. Plus, there are going to be cracks all throughout, making it easy to fall, so you're going to have to be really careful. There do look like there's going to be some really cool areas where you can use costumes to skate down large sections at really fast speeds, which could be really awesome. Looking at the costumes of World 8, we've got another 5 costumes to go over. First up is Amadeus. This costume has a piano or musician motif. It will not be able to attack, but much like the Metal Bad Boy costume, it says something special will happen if you use this costume somewhere on a stage. I'm not sure what it does, but we can see other world inhabitants dancing in this screenshot. Next up is the Frost Fairy. This will let you create snowflakes in the air while jumping, allowing you to move higher in the air and reach places you normally would not be able to. The Frost Giant costume will let you throw snowballs at enemies, freezing them and allowing you to use them as stepping stones to reach different areas of the map. The Hardy Hammer costume lets you become an ice golem. With this, you can attack the Nagati with hammers on both hands. If you hold down the attack button, you can release a powerful spin attack. Last up, we have the Seal Skater. This costume will let you move easier on the ice. Skating will not only let you move faster, but make big jumps on the ice slopes. The boss of this world is the Grim Creeper, and it will drop sharp icicles like swords and shoot out freezing air. Plus, you're going to be on an ice platform, so it's going to be really slippery. World 9. The Man Who Fell For A Princess. Up last, we've got World 9. The main character of this world is Attilio Caccini. Attilio works at an amusement park as a clown. He fell in love with the girl who played the role of the princess in their parade. He doesn't have the confidence to tell her how he feels and can only approach her when he's in full costume so she can't get to know the real him. Let's watch his trailer. Atilio's world is inspired by the neon colors and bright lights of theme parks. You'll find lots of equipment and rides, as well as symbolism that reflects his broken or locked off heart. Not all of this world will be bright and colorful, there is also a haunted house you'll get to explore. This seems like this world will heavily rely on gimmicks and tricks to give you that real kind of fun house feel. There are six costumes to discuss from here in World 9. The first up is the Iron Panda. This lets you turn into a big spherical ball and bounce around. When you jump, you enter the ball state and can break iron blocks. Next is the slow tortoise. With this, you can shoot slow bullets. Enemies and objects that are hit with these bullets will slow down, allowing you to more easily complete platforming sections or could possibly be used for various other things. You'll be able to float above the ground, avoiding things like ice and poison floors as the merry ghost. Next, you can use the Happy Blaster to inflate yourself and burst, causing a large area of effect attack that will be good when surrounded by enemies. Another familiar looking costume is the Pounding Robot. This, like the other pounding costumes, allows you to slam into the ground, creating a shockwave, breaking blocks, and damaging enemies. Finally, last but not least, we have the Rail Runner. This allows you to make a special railroad appear that if you jump on, you can speed around the stage at fast speeds. The boss of this world is Princess Mary. She will shoot cannons at you while also manipulating a rotating wooden horse in the arena. Well, we're just about a month away from the release of the game and there's only three more worlds we don't know much about. 
Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date on all this info before the launch of the game. I've also got some more information about another feature of the game that will be coming out in a couple days so stay tuned for that. That's all for now, and as always, happy gaming.